sitting down with two leaders in the trucking industry. This is Brock Gavin, the president of Aero Truck Sales. This is Jeff Stigler, the chief commercial officer at National Truck Protection. Gentlemen, thank you both so much for spending some time with us today, having a conversation about all things in the trucking industry. And Brock, I want to start with you for people that maybe don't know. Uh, tell us a little bit about Aero Truck Sales. Yeah, sure, Kent. Happy to happy to do that. So, um, Arrow's got a long history. So, in in 2025, we're going to celebrate our our 75th anniversary. Uh, been, been in business a long time. Uh, we would be considered one of the largest and most reputable players uh, in the used truck retail uh, business. We uh, have 16 locations in the U.S. and Canada. We opened our most recent location in Oklahoma City earlier this year. Uh, we tend to focus a bit more on the owner-operator segment. Um, we uh, sell primarily Class 8 trucks, uh, a lot of tractors, but we do sell some medium-duty box trucks, trailers, and the like. Uh, also, a range of, of services, uh, including uh, vehicle uh, service plans, uh, contracts offered by our friends at National Truck Protection. Um, we are uh, intensely customer uh, success focused and oriented. Um, and to that point, we one of the things that makes us unique in the market is that we have an in-house uh, financing company mm -hmm. called Transport Funding. So we actually finance a lot of the retail transactions that we do at Aero. Um, and the reason those things are related, customer success and our financing company, is because we like to say when we finance a deal ourselves, we're in business with that customer for the mm -hmm. next three or four years. And so Arrow is not successful unless the customer is successful. Um, so it, it's really important to us that we set customers up for success. So that's a little bit about Arrow. And part of contributing to that success is NTP. Tell us a little bit about NTP. Sure, thanks. And uh, we have a lot of commonality with Arrow, actually, in terms of our history and our approach to customers. So uh, NTP has been in business for 41 years. We were actually the first vehicle service contract uh, company uh, starting to offer these back in 1983. Um, we've been working with Aero for a long, long time, and I think we'll talk about that as well. Uh, but we have spent the last seven years really revamping our business and bringing it up from a technology perspective uh, to a point where uh, we believe we're best in class in the industry in terms of providing an excellent customer experience uh, when they have to file a claim and also working with our partners to ensure that our products are going to satisfy what the customer requirements are. So we are all about supporting customers after the purchase of a unit. Uh, our focus also is primarily owner-operator and small fleet customers. And um, uh, overall, it, it, it's about keeping customers on the road, ensuring that they have uptime uh, uh, with our contracts and protecting them uh, from uh, unforeseen uh, downtime events. Yeah, so Arrow's going to be celebrating 75 years in 2025, quite an accomplishment. You said, you know, NTP's been around for 41, and, and they've been a, a key piece of, of Arrow for the last 31 years, this partnership has. So what has made this partnership so successful over the last 31 Oh, it's a, a great question, Kent. And I think it comes down to we've got a lot of shared interests, right? So Jeff mentioned, and, and so did I, that we're both focused heavily on the owner-operator segment, some small fleets, but heavily concentrated in owner-operators. Um, that in and of itself uh, is a good place to start. You know, we're focused on the same customer segment. Uh, we also believe that in order to have long-term success, uh, we have to ensure that our customers are successful. Mm -hmm. So it's really in our DNA and both companies that uh, we're going to do everything we can to ensure that our customers are successful, and we, we share that, that view. Uh, we're also win-win oriented. So, um, you know, a partnership only lasts for 30 years or 31 years when everybody is winning, mm -hmm. right? And so for us, we think about the customer has to win, uh, you know, NTP has to win and Arrow has to win. And if we do the right things, we take care of our customer, we provide value for all three legs of that stool, uh, and we do that over time, then, then the, the business will sustain. And if we take care of our customers, guess what? Our customers come back and there's repeat purchases. Uh, they refer uh, us to their friends and we, we grow the business. So it's not so much about, you know, how do we divide, you know, the pie, as they say, but it's how do we grow the pie. And I think if we have the right mentality, which we have over the last 30 years, we grow the business together. Jeff, same question for you. Uh, what, what, what's your perspective? Well, when a customer purchases a truck from Aero Truck Sales, they want to have a good experience after the purchase. So 
that truck may have 200,000 miles on it. It may have 700,000 miles on it. So it's a used unit. Uh, you don't know exactly what's going to happen in the future. And there could be an event where there is an unforeseen failure that needs to be addressed. And often customers uh, spend their money on a down payment and then don't necessarily have excess funds to cover an expensive failure. So uh, having a, a, an NTP contract on a truck sold by Aero Truck Sales really protects that driver uh, over the course of the next several years as they're driving, putting miles on, delivering freight. And if there is an unforeseen downtime event, uh, we strive to get them up and running as fast as possible. And it complements uh, the experience that, is, uh, that they've had purchasing the truck from Aero. So we really are about uh, continuing that support of the customer uh, after the transaction has occurred at Aero. All right. So, Jeff, you know, the word warranty has a lot of different meanings for a lot of different people. So can you kind of talk to me about um, what it means to NTP and how it relates to your role in the trucking industry? All right. So from a technical perspective, the word warranty really applies to the warranty provide by, provided by the OEM when the truck or the piece of equipment is actually sold. Um, what we sell is called a vehicle service contract, and it's really optional to the customer. Uh, they can choose to purchase it or not, um, whereas a warranty is on every piece of equipment. So uh, we're, we're promoting our product as a vehicle service contract in the marketplace, uh, really because that's what it is. And we want to be accurate on the definition of what it is so it is not confused by a, an OEM backed uh, a warranty on a, on a truck. That's interesting. Uh, Brock, I have a question for you. So, you know, you became the president of Aero Truck Sales, you know, during you know, right out of COVID, a, a very interesting time for the market. We've seen, you know, a lot of fluctuation in pricing and a lot of different things in this market. Um, how, have, how have you and how has Aero handled the fluctuations? That's a uh, that's a doozy of a question. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I mean, as you as you just mentioned, it has been a roller coaster um, of the last several years. You know, starting with with you know, the COVID immediate downturn in early 2020, then followed by kind of a, a major upswing right through the remainder of 2020, uh, 2021, and even early 22, and then since then a correction period. Mm -hmm. So I, it's fair to say, I think for our audience, our listeners, I mean, the magnitude of that rise and fall is like nothing the industry has ever seen uh historically yeah. speaking uh truck prices as an example more than doubled uh during that period used truck prices and demand uh in terms of customers wanting to get into the business uh was you know insatiable let's say uh there was a time where you know an owner operator coming into this business could make just a lot of money in 2020 and 2021 including early 22 um, and so they were rushing in to chase these really high spot rates. Uh, truck prices went up. And that sounds great, right? Hey, we're in the business. We sell trucks. This is good. Um, but it made us nervous, right? And so there was things you asked the question, how do we manage that? Uh, well, we, we, we thought a lot about it on the up cycle uh, because we knew that the down cycle was coming, right? What, what, what goes up must come down at, at, at a certain point. And there were two things that we thought a lot about when we think about the cycle of managing. The first was inventory, and that was on us. You know, it's we buy and sell trucks, and the way we make money is there's a spread, right? We buy a truck, we recondition it, we sell it, um, and we make a little margin on that on that truck. Um, when the prices are going up, uh, there's limited inventory risk, right? Because if you buy it today, you recondition it, you sell it 60 days later, Prices, if anything, have gone up, and there's an opportunity to make a bit more money. On the down cycle, obviously, the opposite is true. And if prices more than doubled, the amount of potential devaluation of the inventory is massive. So as we were going through the up cycle, we were monitoring the market in, in, intensely, knowing that as soon as the market turned, we would need to gear down inventory extremely quickly and then keep it relatively low to minimize the devaluation risk. So that's one of the things we did. We kept inventory as low as we could on the downswing. The second thing that's more unique to, to Aero because of our transport funding financing business, and it's also true for our customers, is that you know this customer who buys at the top of the market um, and you know life is good at that point in time. Spot rates are good. They're earning a lot of revenue per mile. There are plenty of miles to go around. Um, but they also bought that truck at a high price. Um, 
And, you know, fuel was low at the time, but fuel's going to increase, as it did in 2022. Mm -hmm. Other operating costs were relatively low at the time and then started to spike. Parts pricing, et cetera, labor rates. Um, So while our customers we knew could make relatively high truck payments in 2021 because life is good, we were were, they're going to hold that 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 uh, loan for three four years they need to be able to make their payments down the road so that's the other thing we thought about we knew that could lead to significant risk on the down cycle and while i wouldn't say we got it perfectly right by any means our customers are suffering and have in 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 the the market downturn we made conscious decisions to try to limit the customer exposure as we think about monthly payments Mm -hmm. you know that's the thing that they got to make that payment every month regardless of whether the market is good or bad and rather than you know attaching a very high monthly payment that they can make in 21 um, uh, but may not be able to make in 23 or 24 uh, we did our best to manage monthly payments put a ceiling on them something that a customer could carry uh, through the term of the loan again we didn't get all those right but that's the mindset that's what we try to do uh, others in the industry maybe took a different approach with worse results um, but again we're in it for the for the long haul and, and and we want our customers to be successful yeah certainly some big challenges with those market fluctuations and and you know Jeff you guys are on the receiving end of some of those fluctuations for sure as well and how are you handling the current situation uh, with both dealer and customer. Yeah, so great question, and uh, we did very well as as the market went way up and uh, truck valuations were a lot higher. We sold a lot of vehicle service contracts, and the attachment rates were great. Uh, customers were very open to. Uh, purchasing these to be able to protect their, their truck. They also had uh, more room from a margin perspective and overall revenue that they were generating. Um, so we, we uh, had some advantages there. Now that truck prices have normalized at a much lower level, uh, it appears sometimes our contracts look like they're more expensive. Uh, the truth is they're still three to four cents per mile for that protection. And with the margin compression that drivers are seeing out there, uh, that's more and more important that they are protected from failures that sometimes can cost anywhere from twenty to forty thousand dollars if there's a catastrophic engine issue, so that's what we're really protecting against. And as drivers experience more margin compression and have some challenges from a revenue perspective, if there is that failure, uh, we help ensure that we're keeping them on the road and keeping them in business. You know, Brock Arrow will promote vehicle service contracts on every retail truck that they sell. Why is that important to Arrow? Yeah, no, we're um, a great question. And and as you said, we're big believers in vehicle service contracts. Um, The reason it's important to us, it's pretty simple. Um, You know, we're we're intensely focused on customer success for the reason we we talked about earlier. And uh, we believe that a vehicle service contract, as Jeff alluded to, is an important piece of the equation. Um, Our customers are not going to be successful if that truck is stuck in a shop and they can't get it out. They need to keep those wheels turning Mm -hmm. uh, to earn and, and, uh, and be successful. And the reality is, you know, especially since we're heavily concentrated in the owner operator segment, this is not oftentimes a large fleet with a huge, you know, uh, uh, let's say accumulated nest egg, uh, you know, that the company has significant savings to draw from. These might be, you know, earlier stage businesses with, you know, more modest financial need, uh, means. And so when that event happens that Jeff talked about, and it happens to be a $20,000 event or a $30,000 event, because this stuff happens, right? These are used trucks. Um, we need to make sure that that customer can get that truck out of the shop. And if they don't have a vehicle service contract to leverage at that point in time, uh, where are they going to find you know that money to get the truck out of the shop? And if, if they can't, then sadly, in some cases, that customer may need to walk away from the truck. They can't, they can't get it out of the shop. The business, uh, you know, does not succeed, and you know that's obviously bad for the customer, and it's also bad for for Aero and Transport Funding because again, we're in business with this customer. We want that customer to be successful uh, through the long haul. So that's why we're we're big supporters. Brock, you just talked about you know driver success, and both of you are very invested in the success of drivers in the trucking industry. So you know, Jeff, you're living this day to day. Can you give us some examples of, you know, some, some or an example or two, I guess, of, of some scenarios where uh, a vehicle service contract really was beneficial for one of your customers? 
So sure, absolutely. Um, so let's assume that a customer purchases a truck from Aero Truck Sales, and uh, they've saved money for a down payment. Uh, they've used a lot of their excess funds to provide a down payment, get in the truck, and actually get out there working, moving freight, and making money. Um, uh, and then assume uh, 30,000 miles down the road, uh, they do experience a failure. Let's say the turbocharger fails, which often costs eight, nine, ten thousand dollars to repair and um, they won't have those funds to be able to pay for that repair and what we do is they'll call us with the claim and we help direct them to a shop we have relationships with over the, over 6,000 locations that can repair uh, trucks across the US and Canada uh, we'll get them into that shop there are over 500 shops that we have negotiated rates for parts and labor that uh, and agreements to uh, get the trucks fixed as fast as possible to ensure uptime so when they get there um, they're able to uh, get that failure addressed uh, if they've purchased rental truck coverage um, they can often get a rental truck where we'll reimburse the cost of that for up to 14 days to be able to deliver that load while their truck is being worked on and uh, alleviate some of that downtime as well so there are really multiple factors in, in terms of the support that we offer after the sale when there is an unplanned uh, failure on the unit and uh, keeping that driver on the road as best possible and minimizing the interruption to their business so I want to ask both of you so how do Aero and NTP collaborate to ensure a smooth experience for truck buyers Brock, I'll, I'll start with you. Okay. Yeah, sure. So um, we we collaborate, I'd say, through the process. And when I say through the process, that starts with um, defining what the appropriate coverages might be that we offer, right? At the end of the day, it's National Truck Protection that creates this coverage and ultimately, you know, manages uh, that the, the, the corresponding claims. But we believe we, we've got a shared customer here. This is an Aero customer and an NTP customer. We want to make sure that the coverages that are being offered are in the best interest of our customers. So we collaborate on the front end. You know, we think about what's that sweet spot of coverage that mm -hmm. protects our customers against the most common and most severe uh, types of issues that they're likely to run into and also respecting the fact that you know they're not unlimited funds here right so we gotta be uh, thinking about the value proposition of that contract so we we collaborate on the front end and then we collaborate through the process you know customer purchase process obviously arrow is taking the lead there because we have that direct interaction with with the customer but we're working together on how do we educate our mm -hmm. customers in the process on the value of the vehicle service contracts um, and we may leverage, you know, information, data from NTP on the values of claims, examples that you asked, you know, Jeff about earlier. And then once we get that customer on the road, uh, and in this case with a vehicle service contract, the ball is mostly in the court of NTP. But there are situations where, again, this is an Aero customer. You know, maybe there's a claim situation down the road, and there's information that Aero has. So we will collaborate, you know, after after the fact as well. Ultimately, it's an NTP kind of claim process and claim decision. But Aero may get involved from time to time if we've got information that may be helpful. Jeff, same question from your perspective. Yeah, so uh, we have been working together uh, for over 30 years now mm -hmm. and very, very proud of that relationship. And that is, as Brock indicated, we have evolved the product and we really have arrived at the best in class product in the market right now in terms of the most comprehensive. And uh, there have been a lot of iterations over the years. And we now have something that we believe protects the customer better than anything else in the industry and is a very extensive coverage. Uh, we've consistently looked at uh, the failures, the, the post-sale claims that occur to see, uh, all right, what, which claims are getting denied and why, and is there a way that we can uh, work to have those covered uh, by, through adaptations to the uh, contract for future customers if it's, if it's necessary. So overall, uh, a lot of collaboration on the product has occurred, and then the customer experience after the fact also so uh, claims when are they occurring which trucks are they occurring on uh, where did they occur in the country and trying to uh, root cause you know do we see any groupings of patterns that uh, we could address together and really improve the overall customer experience in terms of uh, uh, how how, how uh, those trucks behave in, in the market after they're sold so have you seen repair claims going up or down recently so obviously with inflation and some of the uh, parts shortages that occurred uh, post-COVID, we did see uh, uh, the cost of repairs going up, both from a parts and labor perspective, and that's had a significant impact on both of our businesses. Um, it, but overall, 
uh, you know, they're, the frequencies are, are, are pretty much the same, but the overall cost to repair is increased. Mm -hmm. So it just makes it more and more important for the driver to be protected mm -hmm. as they can't anticipate uh, what that cost is going to be. And often uh, with uh, the amount of money that NTP spends on claims every year with dealers across the country, uh, we often have leverage to be able to uh, bring those costs down and make them more manageable and also work towards uh, a faster to repair. What's been the most common failure? Most common failures are actually in after-treatment systems. So uh, over 50% of our failures uh, are related to after-treatment systems, and the average cost of one of those failures is $3,000. They can range from uh, about $1,000 up to uh, 11 or 12. So um, it's it's very much a, a prevalent issue uh, with after-treatment systems. That's the most common that uh, that occurs out there.